Welcome to the New Dad Podcast. We got Derek Marino here again. Back again for the third time, baby. <laughs> but um, if you're just new here, talk about being dads. Talk about every kind of little thing that comes up with your kids, work, life. You know, life of being a dad. Yes, sir. A little, a little crazy. Yes, sir. But uh, you've been doing some big things. What's what's new? Uh, I mean, I don't want to say big things. Just same. I got my business. I'm running. Same shit for that, but... Trying to start getting going on content creation like you. I'm just copying you because I love you and stuff. <laughs> love you too. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I can't. I, I can't weld though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made a YouTube account, and it's kind of going to be like for the at the start. It's probably going to be a lot of gym content and stuff, and then eventually, when I get more set up with cameras and stuff on the go, I'm going to be doing like work stuff, showing me working, and then. Uh, just whatever I do. I'm going to have my wife film a couple of our flag football games. Uh, golfing is going to be another big thing. Probably probably two main things are going to be golf and uh, gym. That'd be cool. Then in the fall, probably uh, I'll buy a mount for my camera to like put on my chest or my head when I'm hunting. That'd be way cool. So I, well, my, my goal is like I want to make a hunting video that's like POV, like from my head or chest, preferably my head because then if I shoot, I'm shooting a deer or something uh -huh. like, and I'm looking down the scope, you have the camera like over my scope. like And hopefully uh, you could see the animal if it's not too far out. That'd but, be cool. Can you get one of those scopes that film? Oh, yeah. So I can I can get like – I can hook it up to my spotting scope and probably like have it on there. So maybe I, maybe if I have an extra person with me, I'll have my spot and scope set up and, uh, have the camera on it. And then you can watch if I fucking hit it or miss. That'd be <laughs> sick, dude. That's one thing I've never done is hunted. So dude. I, we've been talking, I was going to get out last year, but dude, Ezra was being born during yeah. hunting season. Dude, so I didn't go. It's so fun. They're like, it's more than just like going out and killing an animal. Cause like, well, when Psycho. I was when I was <laughs> <laughs> when I was young, I would like I kind of like thought of it as like okay, we're just because my my dad and we've never been much for like eating the animals, you know. We've mm -hmm. kind of just like always killed them and kept the antlers or whatever, but then donated it to either the local butcher at Twilla Valley Meats or gave it to friends and family who actually did eat it. But like two or three years ago, like as I I went, I stopped hunting from like probably the time I was like seventeen till I was like. 22 because so, i just kind of got over it because we did it a lot when i was younger and uh i got back into it and i'm like i started gotten getting really in before leading up to it, i got into watching like meat eater mm -hmm. and i don't know if any, any of you've watched that but it's like pretty much a dude who's like lives and dies like hunting and like eating his own like harvests and stuff and so i kind of got really into that so when i my dad killed a deer that year like we kept it all and i just like he didn't want it but i kept it all and i ate it all and because like i tried it and it was good like uh, maybe it was like my wife didn't like it so much, but I personally loved it. Is that some of the one we went on a golf trip? So if you have boys go on a freaking golf trip, we went to St. George. Oh, yeah. Is that the one that you brought to St. George? Yeah, that's the one. So that was like the first year, like I ever started eating wild game. Yeah, that and, was bomb. And we, I, we took it down to the golf uh, trip and he, I, we whipped up some steaks and stuff and it was super good. Like I, I love it. And so I'm kind of like now that I actually eat it, like last year I killed a deer and right after we killed it, like we brought it off the mountain and we went back to camp and I butchered it on the trailer and Damn. and I cooked it fresh like right then as soon as I could. So it was like maybe an hour, hour and a half after it was killed. And it was like it was even better than the one before, because if you let it sit out or like you don't get it on ice immediately, it kind of like tartars the taste mm -hmm. so because and also it has to do with how fast the animal died so that deer that my dad killed like he shot it and then it went down but when we got up to it it was still alive it like drug it drug itself down into a, like a ravine and he had to put another shot in it but a lot of people don't know if they don't die right away they get adrenaline pumping through them and it kind of like spoil it doesn't spoil the meat but it makes it taste more gamey really it's got that adrenaline going through their blood i didn't know that so that's why it's preferably just a one shot down them like lights out just like that and so it makes the meat better and i witnessed that last year when i killed my deer because i shot it once and it immediately died and then that was and, better and it was so bomb dude so good well, some I, of that meat you didn't share. <laughs> <laughs> I got some in my freezer if you still want some. But I, like I said, it's so good. And I'm like, lately, I, 
I've been getting really big on like only using salt and pepper on meats. Mm -hmm. Like I used to be like, Oh, I need this seasoning. And I had, I have my whole cabinets full of seasoning that I'd never use anymore. Cause I was into the rubs and stuff, but like, I feel like I've gotten to the point with me cause I eat it so much. I just like salt and pepper. Yeah. Maybe I'm just a basic bitch, but that's how I like stuff. I like it. Like that's how I like my eggs, hash browns. I just like salt and pepper. I would maybe say some, that. Maybe some garlic salt. Yeah. Some garlic, a little garlic's good. Yeah. But good. like I heard, the better the meat is, the less you need on it. Oh, yeah. For you know, sure. like, especially if it comes back off of the grill or whatever, and then you start adding a bunch, it's like, eh, it's, it wasn't cooked that good either, you know? Yeah. So, like, the better the meat is, the better you cook it, the and, less and it needs. And for anyone who eats their meat more done than medium rare, you're a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> no, <just kidding. laughs> like, like, why you want to be chewing on a tire? For real. <laughs> like, like, whenever, especially whenever I go to, like, a steakhouse or something, you, I always order medium rare. And I say more on the rare side because it always comes yeah, out. I, I always tell them rare because it usually comes to me medium rare. Uh-huh. Medium rare or medium. I'm like, damn. So you know them cooks just be out there. They're like, they look at it, flip it for a certain time. They're like, eh, that's good. Yeah. Could be more, could be less. But I, I just order rare because if it's more rare, then I'm fine with it. But... If it's medium rare, perfect. Yeah. That's I, that's how I am is medium rare. Yeah. Nothing but, too bloody. But what I was getting at about hunting is like it's super cool like once you start eating your own harvest because it, it brings out like a really primal nature. Like because if you think about like going back in the day like when we were shooting with sticks and rocks mm -hmm. as, as broadheads, like that's the most, that's how you survived. And yeah. like that's why hunting is so like fun because like that brings out that primal nature. It's like you're feeling your ancestors almost like how they had to survive. Cause if you killed an animal, that means your family ate that night yeah. or for the week you know, or year, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. like, so that's just, I think it, that's what it brings out of me now. So I enjoy hunting more as an adult than I did as a kid. Cause I, I think I appreciate the animal more. Like last year when I killed my deer, that was the first deer I've killed since I started hunting as an adult. Damn. And so I killed it and like, I almost got like emotional walking up to it, you know, cause I was like, I just felt so thankful that he, he sacrificed his life so I could eat. Yeah. It, it, it brought out like, it was weird. Cause like, I usually like in, when I was a kid, I'd be like super excited. Like, yeah. But like I got up to him like, fuck yeah. Like, thank you. Uh -huh. Like it was like, it was really cool. More of an appreciation for yeah, it was actual a, hunting. It was like a deep appreciation for like the animal sacrifice for letting me and my family eat. Damn. That'd be cool. It, it was really cool. Like once, once I, cause I had a different mindset than I did as a kid about it. And it just, it was really cool. Well, I feel like as a kid, like a lot of times you're like, Oh, I'm just following, I'm following dad. Yeah. And you know, and like I don't really kid, want to be out here, but I don't know. Yeah. And as a kid, you don't think of it in that much of depth. Yeah. Unless you're like really taught that, you know, which like, like I said, me and my dad and he never ate the meat. He gave it away to buddies or whatever. And so as an adult and I, I felt like a just super deep appreciation for the animal. I, I'd literally like walked up to it. I put my hand on its, uh, like on its shoulder, like on its body. And I said, thank you. Really? Like, I don't, I didn't even like plan it. Didn't mean to it. That's just like the only words that came out of my mouth. I put my hand on its back and I said, thank you. Damn. It was really cool, dude. Like, and I like, I like started tearing up. Like I didn't full on cry, but I was tearing up. Cause like, it was just, like, it was super emotional and I couldn't explain why. That is cool. Like, I, I've never even felt that feeling, you know, yeah. cause like I've never been hunting and like, how long was the process of that? Like how much emotion was built up into getting this deer? Well, like, so we had been hunting all week and so for the general season in Utah, it starts on a, like the second or second or third Sunday of October every year. And then it goes to the following Sunday mm -hmm. and it was the, we'd hunted all week didn't see nothing. Haven't really seen a, a deer worth shooting yeah. or really any deer couldn't. And then Sunday we go out and it's fucking, it's the first like winter storm, like Saturday night into Sunday morning was the first like snowy winter storm. Uh -huh. So we get up there and like, it's fucking winds blazing cold, like 20 degrees fucking yeah. cold as shit. And we, we like kind of like scroll around in the morning, couldn't see stuff. We go down off this hill and like, you kind of have to come off this big hill and it goes down into a ravine and you can either go back up to like go up to a different area uh -huh. or you can take this left and go to the opposite side of the Canyon where you're on. Uh -huh. So we went up and out and then we followed this fence line where you could look back into where we were. And we we're like off more to the, like this like left side, but I was looking into this right side. Cause I was like, we would been there the day before looking into that and we'd seen deer. So I was like, 
I don't know. Maybe I was like, I just had this feeling. I was like, let's just go up there. We get get on our waypoint and we'll just look. And if we don't see nothing, we'll go find another area. Mm -hmm. So we get up to this area and you can, there's just like where we were looking through is like, there's this big tree on the right, big tree on the left. And then there's this opening that you can see into a Canyon. And I put my spotting scope up and literally like I put it up, didn't even like find anything. And as soon as I look into it, there's deer. What? Yeah, I'm like, what the? I'm like, <laughs> and that happens sometimes. It's crazy. So I'm like, okay. And it was a couple of does. And then I see like, oh, that's like a decent buck. Like, dad, look at this. And then we look at it and we're like, should we go after it? I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do it. So we went back down, went into the ravine, went off to the right side. And like, it brings you up this really like sketchy kind of hill yeah. where it's like kind of straight up and rocky as shit. So we get up there because we saw that we can get up to that point and then we'd have to hike through one canyon then up on this ridge and we should be right on top of them. Mm -hmm. And we so we did that and we got hiking. We go over this ridge and we're looking down and we're like, where'd they go? Because we're looking in these patch of trees that we knew they were. And then we're like sitting on this hill standing up. Then we like look down a hundred yards and I'm like, Oh fuck, sit down. <laughs> Cause they're like staring at us and we're like, Holy <laughs> shit, sit the fuck down. <laughs> and so we sit down we find the buck. And then like, I think it was, the shot was like 220 yards. I missed the first one. I, I saw it just over his back a little Damn. and he just like gives like the, what the fuck look. <laughs> and then he like walks like 10 feet. They weren't scared at all. They're, they they did not give a shit. They're like, oh, whatever. Okay. You missed. And then I missed, and then the second one I just dropped him immediately. Damn, that's so, insane. But it was cool, and so that the emotion of like walking and like it's funny when you're hunting because you when you find an animal and you start going after it, you have to kind of take a route where you lose sight of them, mm -hmm. and that's what we did. We went, and we the whole time we like drove up and like up to walk across, we like didn't see him at all. So we we're kind of just like hoping that he, they were still there, and so we get over that hill and just like the anticipation, like when you're hiking, like. I get adrenaline like really easy for that stuff. So like uh -huh. when I'm hiking, I'm not getting tired. Like I'm just like full bore. Let's go. I'd leave my dad like 20 yards <laughs> behind me because he's a little older now, uh -huh. but I, I just book it. So I'm like not getting tired. And then like, as I sit down and I'm preparing to shoot that, I think that's why I missed my first one. Cause I was a little out of breath and I didn't realize it. Uh -huh. So my second one, I kind of like took some deep breaths and really like slowed down. And so it was those emotions just are cool. Like when you're anticipating it. And then once I saw him go down, me and my dad, like whenever we got a deer and like when we were little, we'd always be like, fuck yeah. Like we'd like be yelling in the canyon cause it's down uh -huh. and we get up to it. And it's like the emotion leading up to like the anticipation is just like, you know, it's there somewhere, but you got to go find it. Damn. And so it's just like the emotion for it is pretty cool. Was it, is it pretty emotional once you get it in your scope? Because, like, I know yes. that's a big thing is, like, a lot of people get it in their scope and then the you know, adrenaline hits them and they kind of, okay, like, Okay, this, this is going to sound really panic. This is going to sound really stupid, but, you know, like, when you're playing Call of Duty and you're using a sniper through the scope <laughs> uh -huh. and you're, like, it's, like, swaying uh -huh. and then you can, like, press the button to, like, hold your breath? <laughs> It's like, I swear to God, it's like that. Really? Like the adrenaline takes over and everything's like tunnel vision. Like you're looking through your scope, tunnel vision is shit. And then you just go, and then everything just slows and stops. And then you take the shot. It's literally like, it's an, I, Call of Duty got a pretty good accurate <laughs> depiction of that. Just cause like you get that adrenaline and once you, you have to learn to like control your emotions and not let like, they call it buck fever. Buck fever. That's what it's called. I was yeah. like, I knew it was called something, but I it's wasn't called sure. buck fever. Like kids get it really bad because like they're so excited uh -huh. and you get really shaky. And I still do sometimes cause I just like, I love it. Dang. But so that it's, it's really cool. Like when you get into that, like adrenaline moment. We need to go hunting this year because it's almost like fight or flight. Ooh, we need to go hunting this year because I want to know like come with me how bro. I am in those situations. You know, come with me, bro. I've been telling you for like two years now. I know, but but yeah. So that that was pretty cool. Have you uh, took your son hunting? Oh uh, yeah, last year we took Emmett, he, my oldest. He's seven, but he we, he went on his first hunting trip last year. He it was kind of a cold trip, so he had fun. He definitely had a lot of fun, but he was getting cold because when we'd have to be out and walking around a little. Yeah, but. It was all right. We didn't get anything while he was there. We actually, my dad ended up, it was for my dad's hunt, but he actually ended up having to go home the day before my dad killed one. Oh, that's so nice. it sucked, but we, he was kind of getting like a, he was over it. Yeah. Cause we were there for like four days with him and he was kind of getting over it cause he was cold and, and stuff. And it was his first trip. So you kind of just got to ease him into it. Yeah. So he went home and then the next day me and my dad went out and got one and 
I'm like, I'm the young, strong son now. So now I got to do all the packing out. <laughs> like when I was young, my dad was always the one packing out and I'd carry the bag with all the gear in it. And then, but now is the opposite. My dad, I told my dad, like, take, take I'll put my backpack on. I'm going to put everything that's in it in your backpack. And then I'm just going to drag the deer out. Uh-huh. Cause he shot his, like, it was like not that far up the hill. And then we just drag it straight down to the ravine. And then we actually, to get it up this, like, it was like probably like eight, 50, 60 yards, but it was like a straight uphill. I did not want to drag it. <laughs> so we got the side by side and put it at the top of the ridge and we used the winch and we just, <laughs> ra- we wrapped it around its neck and just let the winch drag the deer up. Damn. Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> exactly. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, and by that time I was like exhausted. Cause like I take 20 minutes of dragging it down the hill. And how, like, how heavy are those? So you have to gut them. Like you have to take all the insides out. Uh-huh. And even after them, they're probably still about 200 pounds. Damn. 180, 200. So, so the Spartan the, race is help for that. De- yeah. De- 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 depending on the size of the deer. Some are like really big body deer, got more muscle and fat on them. But that was like a, a me, that was more of a medium sized deer. So it was probably like 180, 200 once it was gutted out. Damn. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was way cool. And it's cool. Like, dude, it's kind of weird. It's like how I told you I'm the one who has to pack it out now. It's my dad's slowing down a little cause he's just getting older. He's got like, he, well, he, the day, a couple days before he like kind of messed up his knee mm-hmm. and he ended up tearing his meniscus oh, shit. and he didn't know and he didn't get checked out for a while. But during the hunt, he he like kind of slipped and he tore his meniscus and so his his knee was all jacked up and so he, that's why I carried it out by myself mm-hmm. but it's kind of it sucks kind of seeing like now I'm the one that's got to take over and like he's got to slow down and my dad's like passionate about hunting like he's got a lot of animals in his garage like 30 mm-hmm. years worth of deer every every year holy shit so uh, so yeah it's kind of it's kind of bittersweet like now that I'm the one doing the muscle work is it kind of cool seeing that relationship relationship happen like oh yeah he got you into hunting he was showing you like everything and now you're taking everything that he showed you and it's kinda- like i saw this tiktok about hunting once it's like damn i used to f- walk in the snow with my dad following his footsteps but now he's following mine damn that's insane and it's like <laughs> <laughs> hits Ow. you a little hard howie <laughs> especially when like you kind of like laugh at a meme like that and then you're like in the like then you're doing it and you look back and you're like holy shit yeah for real but i don't know it's cool and like that's kind of like the thing me and my dad bonded over the most because he just loved it so much uh-huh. maybe i was a kid and i didn't understand it it, was, it didn't mean as much to me as it did him mm-hmm. but um i look back at it now and realize that that's probably some of our best moments together is when we're got a big big deer down or whatever you know and we, we packed it out together and we got to go brag about it back at camp. Oh yeah, I bet. And like you're disconnected from everything else going on. I think oh, that's like yes. one of the biggest attractions to hunting. I want to do is like, you're just away from everything. Everybody like yeah. notifications are off. Well, like, so we go to Idaho every year to hunt and, uh, where we go is like kind of in a Canyon you don't got service. If you want to get make a phone call or something you got to drive like down the road like a mile or two mm-hmm. and to just to get service to check the phone or whatever but like while i'm there like i tell katie i'm like i ain't gonna be reachable like mm-hmm. you gotta understand like i'm not gonna like I'll, I'll call her like if i get up on the mountain i'll like text her in the morning for a little bit if i'm just hanging out glass in the mountain or i always like before bed well i'll go down and like call her and we'll talk for an hour or so uh-huh and but i tell her when i'm hunting it's I'm sorry. I don't got service. Sorry. There's no way I could even text you. Something about being up on top of a mountain at like right as sun's coming up, bro. It's, it's magical. (laughs) Damn. And like, I kind of get that. Cause like, I guess in a different way. Cause like I've been going snowboarding Oh and man, you get on top of a mountain, like in the morning, your first one there. Dead quiet. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Dead quiet. You just look over the valley and you have all the pretty snow. And it's like, damn, people really don't try and like get out here and see this. Like it's insane. Yeah, I, I, uh, I got the same thing like when you're, when I'm hunting, cause you get out and like, you see the sun starting to peak on the mountains mm-hmm. and then all you're hearing is like birds chirping and stuff. You're like, damn, this is like, this is like what my ancestors did every day. <laughs> For real. It's like, I'm not a bird watcher. Like I don't watch sunsets all the time, but no. damn, when you see stuff like that, it's like you have it, an appreciation. It's like, it's like everything slows down. It's like, it gives you a deeper, like a. Uh, appreciation for the world because uh-huh. like your life's so busy every day like 
work, kids, family, all that, everything's so hectic all the time. And it's nice when you get up there, it's like, it's like time just slows down, you know, Mm -hmm. but at the same time when you're hunting, it goes by so quick and you're like, as soon as you go get home from it, you're like, damn, I can't wait till next year. You're like, holy shit. I got to get back out there. <laughs> Literally. So do you do all the spotting and stuff and go up and have trail cams or I don't do, we've never done trail cams. There's kind of like some weird rules about trail, trail cams in Utah. Now you can't have them like during the season. And so really? we've, yeah, we've never, we've never done trail cams, but we will go out and like scout like for the area. Like we'll go take a trip and just get out and see what's going on, see if we can find anything where they're hanging out. Uh-huh. But yeah, it's for most of the part though, is we're going up just blind and we're freaking it the fuck out. Damn. See, I think that's the way I'd want to do it anyway. Instead yeah. of like so calculated and if, everything. If I had like a hunt in like an area that had like premier like hunting, like big ass fucking deer or big ass elk, then I'd like get really into scouting and like trying to find that big buck or whatever, you know, but, yeah. but I don't know. I just, uh, we kind of just wing it. Would you ever go to Africa to hunt? Um, like trophy hunt, I guess. Uh, depends the animal. Like I would shoot a wildebeest because yeah. they're invasive is not invasive, but they're a fucking problem. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't shoot like, pro, like a giraffe or well, like yeah, that a suck. rhino or a zebra or some stu- Like there's no point in that. They don't taste good. Yeah. You can't take the meat home cause you, but you'll donate it to the local tribes. Yeah. But, I think the only thing like over there, I'd go to like New Zealand and get like what's called a stag buck, mm-hmm. stag deer, something like that. And they're really cool. But there's, as far as trophy hunting, there's only a few animals I'd be interested in going out of the country for. Um, but like those are really exotic animals. I don't fuck with that. Cause like uh-huh. over there in Africa, like a lot of shit's going extinct because, because of trophy hunters. Uh huh. And so I don't know. I don't really fuck with that. I gotcha. Like, but I'd shoot. That's, like, how, that's how I feel, you know. Like, I'd, I'd shoot like a wildebeest. That'd be fucking cool. Because be they just because cool. they killed Mufasa. Yeah, those, <laughs> those fuckers, <laughs> those little bitches, <laughs> stampeded Mufasa, dude. See a hyena, you'd have to take a yeah. take a shot at it, you know. Yeah, them hyenas can get fucked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fuck those hyenas. What about uh? I want to do this. It's a different kind of hunting, but I want to do the hog hunting in Texas. Oh, <laughs> and dude. I want to, I want to hang out of a helicopter. Dude, and- that would be so <laughs> fun. I would love that so much. Cause like hogs are a problem in Texas. Like oh, they're yeah. invasive as fuck. Uh huh. And they're like farmers hate them and everything. They're like, they're welcome that shit. So like I would 100% do that. Dude, I think that'd be so fun. I saw a video where they do the helicopter hunting and then they go out just walking around and mm-hmm. hunting them. With that Mexican OT and that's that looks yeah. <laughs> that looks so fun. Dude, that would be way fun. <laughs> Dude, and like they're like they shot one and then came back and it was like gone. Like eaten on the like Damn. I feel like there's some crazy shit in Texas. Dude, what crazy thing about Utah they just changed last year is you can openly shoot mountain lions now. Really? Before you used to have to like buy a tag and shit, but like they're getting overpopulated in Utah now and then now it's like if you see one, fucking shoot it. You don't need a tag. All the only requirement is you have to report it to the DWR. Damn. So like if, if like if I'm ever out, let's and go I see mountain, a mountain lion hunting. Yeah, if I see a mountain lion, I'm blasting that shit because I want the skull. Dude, I want a mountain lion in here. That'd be freaking sick for the I, pod. I just want the skull to like sit on my desk or something. That'd be so sick. Dude, have like a table right here with the yeah. So is a mountain lion a cougar? Yeah. Same. Let's go cougar hunting. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I had to say that. <laughs> you wild. I, I had to say that. I'm just kidding. But no, but yeah, I uh, I enjoy hunting a lot. It's pretty cool. That's cool. What else are you into? What else are you going to film? Uh, like I said, golf, mostly gym content. I'm, I uh, I just got a new driver for golf. I haven't even hit it yet. I've had it for like two weeks, but I haven't hit it yet. So when we go golfing, are you going to still post the ones when you lose? Oh, yeah, for sure. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Most cool. of the time, he's whooping my ass. So I don't know. We've had some – most of the time, we're pretty split. It's pretty back and forth. Some weeks, it'll like – It'll go a couple of weeks where I'm winning, and then all of a sudden it'll just turn, and I'm complete garbage well, that's for just the next go- month. That's golf in general, bro. You could have, you could be on for a month or a day, and the next day you're shooting 140. <laughs> I know. Like we went out to St. George for this dude's um, bachelor party thing, mm-hmm. and uh, I was whooping your ass the front nine, and I was like, oh, I got this. Like I was, <laughs> was like I could coast and win this game. 
I fell apart and lost. <laughs> <laughs> That's golf, The wheels bro. came off on the last hole. I think I got like a nine. That's what sucks about golf. Well, not sucks, but that's just the hard thing about golf. It's like you can have an amazing couple holes, but like one bad hole just ruins the entire rest of the game. Uh-huh. I, I think when Ethan broke the putter, when he t- <laughs> tried to tee off with the putter, that's – that's when my game went downhill. I don't know what it was. <laughs> the vibe was gone. <laughs> the vibe was gone because I was like, oh, we're we're just goofing around now. We, we really just be doing stupid shit. <laughs> uh-huh. We like took some pictures, like, you know, for the moment and everything, and then broke the putter, and I was like, oh, we're just hanging out now. And <laughs> yeah, for real. My wheels fell off. So that kind of, like, made me want to bring up a topic, like, What's your like a uh, stance on like religion? Because like Easter's like a uh, what is Easter like? What is the birth of Christ or Resur- I think it's the resurrection. Like is that when what he, it is? yeah. I'm not super religious, so I was just kind of wondering like because it's Easter weekend. Like, what's like your stance on like that? So my stance on religion, and, um, and I know we're both kind of the same where we don't really practice yeah. religion a lot. So uh huh. Like I have my beliefs and like, I'm, I feel like I'm really religious. Like I pray every night, Mm -hmm. you know, and I pray for stuff and I don't know. I feel like you could communicate that way, but what would you consider like your religion? Like if you were in like a category, like Mm. Christian or whatever, I don't even know. It'd be Christian. It'd be more like of a, like a Catholic stance, I believe, Mm -hmm. you know? And like, I respect everybody's religion out there. I really don't care, but like, I have a problem with like, the actual like churches, like yeah. <laughs> the organizations themselves is where I'm like, eh, I'm not really into it. I, I feel that. Cause like I, the past year, like we obviously we've talked about it before. Like we've kind of been like on a lot of like self improvement and stuff. And I feel like one thing that's starting to interest in me more and more is like getting into religion and like yeah. maybe like actually believing in something. Cause like I believe like I have my beliefs, but it's kind of like, I guess more spiritual than like, I would say religious. Yeah. Like I believe in certain things, but I don't like, I haven't really been interested in like a church sort of say. Yeah. That's how I am. I'm like, I'm not like, Oh, I need to go to church. I can't do this. I can't do that. And then I'm not getting into heaven. Like, you know how some churches are. That's what I like. I never grew up in a church. You come or you're going to hell. Yeah. But (laughs) it's like, Damn, I know some people that go to church every week and I'm like, they'd be doing some sneaky shit. Yeah, like, for real. <laughs> like, you know, like they're the ones that are not, not everyone, but a lot of those people, they're the ones addicted to porn, addicted to mm-hmm. drugs, maybe well, or it's, alcohol. It's and, because a lot of people go to church to try to counteract their bad actions. To like repent. They're like, oh man, I got to go to church this week. I, 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 I can something. do this stupid decision because I go to church and repent about it. So I'm still getting into heaven. Yeah. Like I, and that's what I don't agree with. But I guess like the reason I want to talk about it is cause like, I've kind of just been like, so my, my wife grew up really, uh, she went to church a lot and like for a uh, Christian type church. And she's kind of, did, she's kind of been interested in it too. And she's been kind of explaining me to things. And one thing that, I saw as the, I told her as I saw a TikTok. Who was it? I believe it was it was Cat Williams on Joe Rogan's podcast. They were talking about it. They're like, he said something about like I'm gonna butcher this, but he said something about how want to know why I believe there is a God because God created cows. And he's like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, he created cows because uh, they emit the when they eat they eat the grass and then they emit uh, gas. They, like, they fart and they <laughs> and burp and they re- release gases that protect our ozone layer. And uh, there's a reason steak is so popular for eating in people's health because it's one of the most things that they say God brought to this land of that had chickens and uh, cows because you would eat cows to eat for your protein and you'd eat their meat, but they'd also bring you milk. But guess mm-hmm. what? When the milk goes bad, it bring, brings cheese. Mm-hmm. So it kind of just like brought, he broke, I, I'm i butchering it, but he broke <laughs> it down and like this thing about cows and how they do so much. And it's like, how did he know that we needed this perfect animal that needed three stomachs to emit this gas to protect our earth? Yeah. And But then he also provides so much nutrients for human life through milk, cheese, meat, and all that. So it kind of like, it really interested me. I'm like, that's a really good point. It's like some India shit. Yeah. Because like, they don't eat cows. Yeah. Because like cows are so important, I think. 
I, I could yeah. be wrong. <laughs> so like, and she kind of, and I didn't like put it together till my wife told me, she's like, yeah, like there's a Bible like story where they say they took all, of, uh, God took all of his disciples and he went into this land that was filled with chickens and cows because cows do all this thing. So mm. I, I'm butchering it. I'm not saying it exactly cause I'm not super religious and know the exact stories and stuff, but I thought that was really interesting how, cause like, if you think about it, there's so much, uh, that was put on earth for like, you don't realize that like um, the reason, the reason like bees, yeah. like every, like this is a stupid example. But you seen the bee movie? <laughs> yeah. For real. Like for real though, like yeah. you don't have bees everything goes to shit yeah. cuz they don't pollinate uh-huh. they pollinate like all the grass and if we don't have grass and trees and stuff we have no oxygen yeah. cuz they emit, they produce oxygen so it's kind of just like it made me start thinking pretty deep on it it's like that's that's actually a really good point cuz like there's all these different animals and stuff part of the food chain that has to happen f- to make our world go around yeah i don't know it's like <clears throat> I I've never looked at it that way, like with the animals and stuff. Yeah, so I'll it's, have it's to look crazy. at it that way. That's pretty cool. It's crazy, bro. But like <clears throat> with religion, I kind of look at it more of like from a history stance of things. Mm-hmm. So I'm a I'm a fucking nerd with history. I, I don't yeah. know why. Roman Empire. You ever <laughs> think the Roman fucking Empire? Yeah. How many of you men think about the Roman Empire every day? I guarantee it's a lot. It'll be like, oh, we got running water. Roman Empire. <laughs> For We're, real. I'm watching football. Roman Empire, like Gladiator, you know. I like going to sports games because I like watching people collide into each other. Oh, Roman and I Empire. like to yell and eat stuff and drink stuff while I watch it, <laughs> you know. But like going into war sounds kind of fun, so I can <laughs> obliterate people. Roman Empire, Roman Empire, you know. I want to take like, over this. That's land. like the basis of being like a masculine dude. <laughs> yeah, for real. Like just it all stems from Roman Empire. <laughs> the Roman Empire and how <laughs> the. The, um, the, what the Stoics in the For Roman Empire real. thought. Exactly. <laughs> it's all on my TikTok. But no, that's, it's just a super, once you start thinking about it in that way of like how there's so many things in the world that go around and it, we want to have a world because of it, yeah. like including animals and stuff. It's a really cool way to think of it. And so it's kind of shifting me into wanting to maybe not be more religious, but like look into it more just cause like yeah. it'd be cool to have information on that. Yeah, like, I think I, if I do anything, it's either going to be, like, Catholic or, like, maybe, like, a non-denominational church where there's not one specific. Yeah. It's more of a broad overview. But, like, I look at things from, like, a history point of view, kind of, like, what happened mm-hmm. historically. Yeah. And kind of, like, compare there, like. Well, dude, um, when you think of that, like, a lot of, like, history, like, a lot of the greatest wars stem from religion. It's yeah. too nationality or groups that disagree with each other because of their beliefs yeah that's where a lot of like wars come from money control religion and yeah. land like yeah I, exactly. there's three big ones money land and um like control mm-hmm. and like when you look at it it's like yeah like you're kind of right and like when you look at it historically it's like what are you, how are you going to get control over all these people in Egypt, Rome, Greek? Yeah. Like, how are you going to get control? You're going to have a religion. You're going to make the people believe in what you believe and turn on their ruler. Uh huh. And like, how are you going to make these people behave? Cause like we are all humans. The homo sapien mm-hmm. comes from like a nomadic state. That's where we, yeah. that's what we were. <clears throat> yeah. We were quite literally monkeys. <laughs> yeah. Like nomads. Like we we're traveling around eating scavenging like yeah how do you get a big group of these people and control the population population to behave not run around killing people not still stealing stuff you make them believe that there's only one way to get through the life yeah or, exactly or get to heaven or whatever you know or a punishment or something like yeah. that you know so it's like i don't know like when you look at it some ways it's like damn it's hard to believe some stuff but but uh, I that, still do. And there's another thing is like, it's hard to believe like Bibles and stuff because how many times was it interpreted or translated or whatever, you know, yeah. you never know. You'll, no one will ever know exactly how the human race starts. You can have beliefs and you can kind of get a general idea, but no one will ever know just because, or even know if like say Jesus was real, you never know because that Bible has been reiterated, retranslated so many times throughout history. I see things that like 
they do have like actual like kind of records that Jesus was a real person. Yeah. But yeah. like the stuff that he did, like who knows, you know? Like like saying like, oh, he walked on water. Turned and, water to wine. Yeah. And like stuff like that. It's like, uh, was it that or was he doing something and it got meta, meta, made into a metaphor or something? Yeah. You know? It got turned and like, you know, people talk like you, you'll go kill a 200 pound deer and you're like, Bro, I killed a fucking three hundred pound deer, and then yeah, someone exactly. that hears that, oh, bro, he killed this monster like, of a deer. It's like the it's like the game of telephone. Yeah. So like words get twisted over time, but it's just it's interesting. You never know exactly what it is. You can only have what you believe in yeah. based on the information you receive. Yeah, and I'm more of like an open minded guy. Yeah. Like I'll, I don't like to close my mind off because like I'll be like I'll learn something historically from like I took college courses on it mm-hmm. and stuff, and like you go talk to someone just in one religion, like that has a pretty open mind. That's down to talk, you know, and be like, Oh bro, did you know like this and this and this happened? And they're like, Oh no, it didn't. And like, just so closed (laughs) off and stuff. Yeah. And like, well, knowledge is power, bro. You should never just like be, uh, closed off to like learning, getting new information. Cause no one in the world, even the smartest people in the world, they don't know everything. Mm -hmm. They may know a lot because they have a lot of experience and knowledge in things they've read and seen and experienced, but knowledge is power, bro. You can't just think, you know, everything when reality, you don't know fucking shit. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I might not know shit. You know, yeah, I'm just speaking out my ass here. Yeah, maybe but I'm like, a dumbass. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, if you read the old, the New Testament and everything, it's like, damn, God's this good. You know, like, you know. But there's, you don't know, pun like big punishment. There's punishments, but not like nothing crazy. Yeah. But like, then you look at the Old Testament. I don't know if you've ever looked into it. Mm-hmm. Like, God was a fucking gangster. <laughs> <laughs> He like over the promised land. He's like, man, this is your guys' land. You kill everybody in here, and it's yours. Yeah. You kill the women, the children, the animals. It's yours. Oh my and god. It, like. Oh my god, that's brutal. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, I don't know. I feel like that's more what it was back then, because that's what the shit they would do. Yeah. There's literally gladiator fights back yeah. in those days. Like, you so, know. Somet- so sometimes I think we need to go back to that time. <laughs> <laughs> Get a little stress out. Fucking iPhone. I want to fight in the Coliseum. <laughs> I know for real. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it's just like, I don't know. Like if you're more open to look at like the old Testament, I feel like, and that was written closer to around those times. So I feel like that has more of a translation. Yeah. And there's a reason that there's a saying, fear nothing but God. Mm-hmm. Cause God would punish you if you fucked up. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I Like, I know it's like corny to get into religion or whatever. And I don't want, whoever's watching it like think weirdly of us but like like we said we're just like we're just bullshit and like we don't know everything we're just like i just wanted to get your opinion because that's something that's just like been on my mind lately it's like because i've been thinking like maybe maybe i should do want to get into it like maybe because i've i've grown up i'm not like the ignorant teenager i was anymore where i was like fuck religion i'm not ever gonna get into religion yeah. that's all stupid if i don't see it i'm not my wasting my time in church on a sunday yeah if i don't see it because that's how my mindset used to be i was like if i can't see it and then experience it and pr- it can't be proven as real it's not real yeah but now i've kind of like matured and i've grown up and been like okay maybe there's a reason so many people are into this because maybe it does have a significant impact on their life. Oh yeah. And like one thing, um, Oh, that kind of bugs me. is like, Oh God did this for me. God did this for me. Like God blessed me with this. It's like God blessed you with the ability to like to put you in done. that situation. Yeah. Like, see that's, that's what I'm big on too is like, I don't think God gives you blessings. I think he gives you the ability to manifest those of those uh, blessings. Yeah. And I think that is a blessing is like, he gives you the ability to overcome it, but you could fail it too. Yeah, exactly. You know, like if you've succeeded in it, then yeah, you got a blessing and he gave you the ability to, to yeah. succeed. Yeah. So I, that's, that's kind of my standpoint is I just, I don't think he specifically looks at you and says, Oh, he needs to win the lottery right now. <laughs> yeah, for real. Or he he really needs this whatever right now. I think the choices you make and the faith you put into yourself and the people around you is what manifests the blessings that you need. Yeah, and like shit, sometimes a blessing is you doing some something super dumb. Yeah, for and real. And like going down a dark path and then you see something and you're like, oh my God. Like, you know, yeah. like Maybe, maybe, this is a blessing to see this and have this realization like and maybe, turn my life around. Maybe God puts the idea in your head to do a bad decision because you need to be humbled into something. Yeah. 
And like, yeah, this, this, every, this might sound dumb, this whole segment, but like sometimes like when you do some dumb shit or like, like you're pretty close to God at that point because maybe yeah. he is trying to communicate to you and like yeah. show you something that you're supposed to see and like change your life, you uh-huh. know, or like, I've had this weird realization, like, man, you're never closer to God than when you're closer to death, when you're close to death. Honestly, though. And it's like, ah, yeah, that, that's wild to think. Honestly. But, like, I agree 100%. Because, like, I think, like I said, I think if you sometimes maybe that God is putting those ideas in your head because you need something out of your life because you're not doing what you should be doing at the moment. Mm-hmm. Cause I know as a teenager, I made some fucked up decisions. I'm, I did some stupid shit, but I came out through it as a better person in the long run. Yeah. Maybe not within a year, two years, three years, but 10 years later, I feel like I think back on that and like, damn, I'm needed that to happen. Cause I was not being a person who I want to be. Or was not being a good respectable be. person, you know? Exactly. And like, yeah, like, I don't know. I look at stuff like that and it's like, I, maybe I wasn't being as positive or I wasn't like, maybe I was pretty toxic to be around, you know? Yeah. And like, you just kind of, there's usually a realization that happens and you're like, Oh, I don't want to be this guy. Yeah. You know? So like one thing that in that sense is like, I feel like in high school I was kind of like a, a really cocky person mm-hmm. and I was kind of like full of myself, thought I couldn't be touched, thought I, my shit don't stink, you know? Mm-hmm. But as I've grown older, and like now I, I, I second guess a lot of things because I don't want to be viewed as that person anymore. Yeah. I want to be viewed as a person that's like, like warm and welcoming and like caring, but I'm also, I'm, I'm a fucking, I'm a, I'm, I'm a killer too. At the mm-hmm. same time, you know, like I got that mentality where like, I'm going to fuck some shit up, but if someone needs something, I'm going to get that for him. You know, yeah. like I, in my head, I know that I can do anything I want to do and I can be who I want to be. But to other people, I'm going to be a good, respectable person. Yeah. Like I'm never like, I'm really big on not like trying to make bad out of people, you know? Yeah. Like I, I try not to like talk shit on people or like bad mouth. Like I, I would say now I don't bad mouth people. And dude, I don't, I walk away from people that are bad mouthing. I'm like, or yeah. like talking about other people. I'm like, yeah, I'm exiting the conversation yeah, now. It's like, I don't know. Like if it's someone like, I don't know, it's like maybe I don't agree what they're doing and I don't like what they're doing, but that doesn't mean I have to say anything about them, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause like, that's just like not who I want to be anymore. Like back in the day, like I'd be like, yeah, fuck that guy. Like he's a fucking tool. He's a prick. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes I joke about like shit (laughs) like that. Like so you see a dude on the internet, it's like fucking tool. But, Uh but you know, like when you're in a conversation, you don't like, I try not to be like a hater. Yeah. Like I'm really big on not having hater mentality. Yeah. Cause I think it's just a waste of time, a waste of energy and it doesn't lead to good things. Instead of being a hater, maybe if you, it's like a thing. If you see someone doing better than you, Maybe don't be jealous of them. Maybe like appreciate the work they put in, you know? Yeah. Cause you don't know what they've been through. You don't know their life. You don't mm-hmm. know what they did to work up to that point, you know? Yeah. Bro, anybody out there watching? I saw this thing on TikTok, kind of on that hater stuff, like mentality. If you go up to somebody and you like, man, I had to do this, like you have bad news, look at like their face and like how they react. Almost everybody will kind of grin when you first tell them some bad news. Really? Yeah. Or like a lot of people are, are like kind of happy to see you not be doing good. Yeah. That's crazy. And like, and maybe subconsciously they don't mean to do it, but it's like a quick instinct. And then they're like, Oh man, I'm so sorry. Damn. And like, but in their mind, it's like something that clicks that like, Oh, he's doing worse than me. Yeah. Or like if you have something like great, like a lot of times you'll see like a, like a frown almost. And then they'll be, Oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. Yeah. It's like, like on some body language. We, yeah. We've said that psychology. we've said this before, but it's like people want to see you doing good, but not better than them. Yeah, exactly. It's, and I've, I say that all the fucking time and it's stupid, but it's true, bro. Like, so <laughs> you talked about it. I think one time, maybe it was on a phone call we had, or maybe it was on the last pod, but <laughs> our phone calls, phone calls are pods. Yeah. They're literally podcasts. So I get them mixed up, but like you said something about like, you how on TikTok you can see who views your videos and who likes yeah, them. Yeah, motherfuckers. So you can see like all these people you're friends with that lo- see your shit, but they're not liking it. Uh huh. Like 
Why not? What 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 what? Because now I see it. I've made my page. Uh -huh. I post one video, but I can see who sees it and who likes it. Yeah, like what does it cost to like? It's like you're so your buddy that you grew up with, played sports with, maybe had some sort of relation. You may not be best friends, but maybe you have some sort of relationship with. You'll like a fucking cat video, but you won't like him trying to do something with his life. Yeah, for real. Or like you'll see and just keep scrolling. It's like. Bro, it takes even, one second to make a quick like or like watch the video it, twice to help. It, it, it does not cost anything just to press ding, swipe. Just double tap, swipe. Yeah. Even if you don't watch the full thing. You don't even watch it. Just like help them get out there. Yeah. Maybe we're saying this because we want to get more reach. Want to get likes. <laughs> yeah, for real. Maybe that's it because we want to make something out of this content creation. But I don't know. It's just weird, bro. Like if I see someone I know trying to do something positive and like – have a healthy habit like content creation. I mm -hmm. like their stuff, even if I don't like their product. Like Katie has a friend, my wife Katie, has a friend who does like a eyebrow threading. I have mm -hmm. no fucking interest in that shit, mm -hmm. but I followed her page and I like her posts. Yeah, exactly. It's, it doesn't take a lot. Because it's Katie's friend and it's someone I know trying to build something. And like, dude, it's so hard to put yourself out there on social media. Yeah, for And real. like say something or like film a TikTok. Like it sounds dumb. And like. Dude, I was doing it today at the gym. Like I was like filming myself. I felt so self-conscious like because I don't want to make under other people uncomfortable. I don't want them to get mad at me for filming. Uh -huh. Like and then like I made a little review on this brand of the clothes I was wearing in the sauna. And I was by myself. But We'll I was, talk like, about that in a yeah, minute. Yeah. But I was in the sauna like just talking and I was like, God, I sound stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Especially like when you watch the video to edit your. Like, oh my Am god I, you're like is that really what i sound like uh-huh <laughs> i'm yeah, just trying to voice. talk man <laughs> you're like damn i'm an idiot but i don't know it's just like i i just hate the like hater mentality of like not wanting to support someone local like you'll like every one of jake paul's videos but you won't like your fucking buddy you played football with video video or like someone you just went to school with maybe you're never friends with them uh -huh. and i know there's been people like i've seen who so there's one dude who I've never hung out with him, never like really associated, been in the same place a whole lot with him, but I knew of him. Uh -huh. He uh, he started his own like uh, home or deck building company. He'd build like Trex decks and mm -hmm. little st and like do like leveling for gravel work and stuff like that. And like I support him. Like I like this page. I share all this stuff. If someone needs this stuff, I tag him. Mm -hmm. So maybe he gets more customers. Cause like I I want the same thing for me. That's no. how you build those relationships. But like I've never even like had a relationship with this dude, but he's doing something to try to make his own path. Yeah. And, so, and I support that so much. Cause you know what it go like what it takes to like put yourself out there like that. Like we talked about this like on the same like last one, but like I don't know. It it takes two seconds to like and help the algorithm. Like, yeah. like you said, like you can see who likes it. Yeah. Like shout out to Mikey Stewart. Sure. <laughs> I see him liking all my videos. <laughs> well, whenever he sees it, Mikey, like, yeah. Mikey's one of the ones who didn't like my stuff. So I'm going to punch him <laughs> next time. We uh, we'll see him at our football game later. So I'm going to go punch him. <laughs> no, nah, I actually, right. I got a lot of love for Mikey. He's a really cool dude, dude. Shout out to Mikey. Cause he just became a superintendent at the golf course. I just heard that. That's freaking he awesome. He posted on Facebook, dude. That's really sick. Cause like, I, I don't know if he, I haven't talked to him about it. I don't know if he quit his other job and he's doing that full time, but that's super cool. Cause like, he's been getting really into golf and I've been golfing with him the past couple of years too. Yeah. So that's really cool. Actually. That's it's cool to see your friends. Like, what niches they get into because you know? like he's gotten really into golf and i'd never i don't talk to him and then we don't hang out or nothing but i know he's liked golf a lot and if he's if that's like a venture he wants to go out on and be the golf superintendent and like work in the golf industry that's sick dude like i'm actually really proud of him because that's really cool yeah that's awesome so shout out to you shout out to mikey if he, if he ever watch if this. he watches this <laughs> little bitch <laughs> but like yeah, I don't Cut know. Cut your hair too. <laughs> <laughs> it's long. You got some That's locks. That's commitment right there. You got some locks. But like, yeah, I don't know. Just on that, I don't know. Like you see people even preview your profile, but then they won't like it. And then they like see every video and then don't like it. Dude, all my likes come from people I don't, I have no fucking idea who they exactly, are. Exactly. And it's funny to see that you're like, what? Like that's wild. Yeah. Like I get a couple of people I know, but then. Like most of the likes is some random yeah. dudes. All right. Maybe we're just being haters now. Yeah, Now we're, <laughs> now we're just being hating. But trying to get, trying to do the shit we're t saying not to do. Bro. But like that's on some like talking about the religion. Why I haven't been into it is like they say they're not judgy. 
Some people are judgy. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, cause I swear and I do this and I have tattoos and like, look at me, I'm freaking tatted up and I have a mouth like a goddamn sailor. Yeah. But it's like, it's, you talk to me, I'm more real than, you know, a lot of people. Cause well, a lot of people hide shit. Well, you like, can talk to me. I'll tell you anything. Well, and the thing is about us, I, I, we're both the same way in the sense of like, we're not afraid to give someone the truth. Yeah. Like we, we, I feel like we don't really like to preserve feelings. Yeah, like we won't bullshit people. Like, and maybe that's why maybe we don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> I know. <for laughs> but <real>. it's because <laughs> like so, a lot of people like, you need to be told the truth. You don't need to be sugarcoated shit in life. Yeah. Sometimes you just need the cold hearted truth. And it's not because I want to be a dick. It's because I fucking love you. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, maybe if we were one of my friends and like, I've ever hurt your feelings, like I'm sorry, but like, I'm just trying to be a real friend to you. Like, yeah, it's like real you, friends are going to tell you how it is and be real with you. But those people that are just like, Oh, it's okay. You'll get through it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Those aren't your friends, dude. No. They don't want to see you doing better. No, like if someone's going through a breakup, I told one of my friends, I was like, dude, you need to get over it right now. Like, fuck that person. Let them live their lives. Like, just yeah. stop. Yeah. And you know, it's like, it might Easier sound, said than done, but. Like, it might sound harsh to like, say like, dude, I've heard you talk about this chick for like five, like five days in a row, like nonstop, like stop, dude. Yeah, for real. <laughs> like, get over yourself. Like, yeah. get over it. And like, you You'd hate to say that and it feels weird saying it, but it's like, dude, stop. Yeah. I don't know. I, I agree. Or like if you're someone's doing something bad in life and you'd like, dude, like I'm not being a hater, but you need to stop like this bullshit that you're doing. Yeah. And so, like I'm just trying to be your friend. Like you might hit me for the next six months, but maybe what yeah. I say will impact you. Yeah. Maybe in a year you'll look back and be like, you'll text me and be like, you were right. You were right. Maybe you, I needed that. Yeah. I could see it now. You were just thinking my best interest and all these other people around me that were like, Oh, it's okay. You're good, bro. Yeah. You don't have an alcohol problem. Yeah. For Stuff real. like that. Like those aren't your friends. Yeah. They just want you to buy them drinks. Speaking of, <laughs> this is another thing I wanted to get in on is, uh, alcohol consumption. Mm -hmm. So I had this experience where, uh, it was like, uh, I mean, I gotta, I gotta word this right. Dude, it's a flex whenever like insurance, they're like, how much do you drink? It's like zero <laughs> bitch. <laughs> it's like very occasionally. <laughs> yeah. And so, so like, I, I don't like how alcohol has become like such a routine and things where like, it'll prevent people from going to do something if they can't bring alcohol. Yeah. I've noticed that people are like, uh, you won't have alcohol. I'm, I'm good. It won't be yeah. that fun. Like, or if like you're having to get together in the park or something and you can't bring alcohol to a public park. So like they won't want to come, you know? Yeah. Or so like, I don't know. I just, or they somehow got to sneak it in. It's like, bro, really? Like you, so I'm not trying to like gloat or anything. I'm going to get into this more as I continue to talk, but like, I'm not trying to gloat, but I'm trying to go this whole year without drinking at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing good so far. And it's luckily I've never like, it's not like I've ever been an alcoholic or like had a problem with alcohol. It's just something I want to do. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, I want to just like try to like stay like sober from it for a whole year. See if I can do it. Cause I don't think since I've been 16, I've gone a whole year without being uh, get, drinking alcohol. So like, it's just like one, it was kind of a new year's resolution. It was like, well, let's see if I can go a whole year. And the hardest thing is going to be when I golf because <laughs> I love an Arnold Palmer on the course, bro. Nice that shit hits different one. that and, uh, and hunting. Cause yeah. I, I get, I get fucked up when I'm hunting. <laughs> like when we're back at the camp, bro, we get back from hunting. The guns are away. Yeah. The <laughs> guns are away and we're just saying around the campfire, but I get fucked dude. <laughs> Off some twisted teas. I, I see. That's the thing about alcohol. I don't like like beer. Mm. I like the fucking girly drinks, like all Arnold Palmer's and twisted teas. All the fruity drinks. Yeah. I like the little gay drinks. But. You make it in a pineapple and I'm fucking there. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I don't know that's, but that's just one thing I'm kind of, one of my goals this year is go no alcohol. And then maybe on fucking next year, January 1st, I'll, have a, have a drink, you know, yeah. it's not like I'm banning it for the rest of my life. It's just like one thing that's really, uh, got me wanting to do it is I went to Wendover in December and mm -hmm. I got, I got pretty shit face playing blackjack. Mm -hmm. And the next day I like drove home and, uh, went to the gym and it really affected my workout. I had no energy. I had no stamina. I just didn't want to be there. Yeah. That's kind of when I like thought I was like, damn, I don't want to do this because like, I'm, I go every day, no rest days. I told you like two weeks ago, I took, finally took a rest day after like three months, yeah. but like, I don't take rest days. I go every day and 
I noticed like if I drink alcohol, it affects my workout the next day so hard. Like, and I don't like that because when I'm at the gym, that's like my time of like inner peace. That's when I'm like not thinking about work, not thinking about anything. I'm just locked in for an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. And so I want to optimize that hour to hour and a half as much as I possibly can. Like I know, and it's not even alcohol. If I drink or eat something shitty, like the night before the next morning, when I go to the gym, I'm slaggy or I'm sluggish and lagging and feel like crap. Yeah. And so a lot of my premise about alcohol is just like, I want my performance in the gym to be better. Yeah. It's not because I think I'm a better person than you because you're having a a beer. I don't care. It's other people's life. You know, I'm not going to judge you for wanting a beer. If there's nothing wrong with it, maybe if you're an alcoholic, yeah, then it's like, bro, you need to stop. Yeah. But like if you, someone wants to have a beer, like right now, if you want to have a beer while we do this podcast, go for it, dude. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Like it's your life, but don't judge me because I don't want to drink alcohol. Dude, you get more. I want to be healthy. Dude, yeah, I get more hate yeah. for not wanting to drink than people who always want to drink. Uh-huh. I was going to so say that. It's so normalized in society and it bothers me, dude. And maybe I'm like, it makes me feel like a black sheep because I don't want to drink alcohol. It's like, dude, it's, it just comes down to me wanting to feel the best I possibly can. Yeah. Like when I kind of on that, like how you said it's normalized and becomes routine. Like, okay. I really have only drank when I did this podcast, when I started it. Yeah. Cause like, I was like, I was kind of scared. You see that camera, you see yeah. the light, you're like, <sighs> and when we were talking, when we were talking about you doing it, we were always like, yeah, we'll, we'll be, we'll have some Arnold Palmer's. We'll get a little, little drunk during it. It'll be fun. Uh-huh. And that's, if you want to do that, mean? dude, that's totally fine. Like, I'm not going to be mad, but like I, like last time we did it, I told you asked me if I wanted a beer or something. I was like, no, I, I just want water. Yeah. Because like I'm trying to not drink. I'm really like shooting for it. And there's times, bro. There's times where I'm like tough. Twisted tea would go hard right now. <laughs> oh yeah. That's why I'm doing like very occasional. Like yeah. And if I do have one, I only have like I have a max of just two drinks. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I'm not gonna judge you for getting drunk or, or something. Maybe like if we are watching a UFC fight or if we're like. Doing a like an occasion, you know, going out to about time to have dinner, whatever. Celebrate yeah. a thousand likes, which I yeah. don't know how many years that'll take me. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to judge you as long as you don't judge me and respect my decision. Yeah. Cause like the biggest thing is like when you ask for, I was like, do you want a beer? You're like, no. I was like, oh, okay. Do you want water? Yeah. Like, what do you want? Like, then, then I have I got, soda. Then I got a glass of water. That's another thing, bro. I'm trying soda, but I'm that, trying. that Dr. Pepper be hitting. Yeah. But I, I get home, dude, and I have a steak with a Dr. Pepper and she. I know. That's so nice. That's so hard, bro. Like, we'll get into that here in a minute, but it's like, with the alcohol. I'm good? Yeah, I'm good. But it was like, um, yeah, biggest thing, it's like, I, I've really only drank when I started this, but I haven't, like, drank really since. Yeah. And it's not like that I need to or want to. It's just like occasionally it's like, oh, it's nice to have a beer. Well, but uh, like when you have a beer or whatever every now and then, sometimes it is a little therapeutic. Like you had a hard day, fucking work with shit. You're stressed the fuck out. It happens. Oh, this is what I was trying to think of. Sorry. But like when I lost my job last year, last summer, it was like someone, everybody's like, oh, do you want a drink? Oh, I'm like, I'll make you a drink right now. Do you want some beer? Like, like it's trying like to get a, you to cope with it. Yeah. It's like, it's a normalized thing. Like if you lose your job or have a shitty day to have a beer and it was like, I was doing 75 hard. So I was like, no, I'm good. But it's like, and I didn't, but it's like become so normalized and like stuff. Like if yeah, you have something really bad happen, you, someone gets drunk or it's a coping mechanism yeah. that's normalized in society. It's like, everyone just like kind of wants a thing to take the pain away. But me, I'm kind of in the mentality. It's like, nah, it's like, I nah, want I that pain. That. I want that pain. I want uh-huh. to feel that with every emotion I have. And then I want to turn it into something great. Yeah. Like even in the gym, I've like, you almost live in a delusional world. You're mm-hmm. like, so-and-so is going to be bigger than you. And like, you yeah. keep going and you keep pushing. It's like, yeah, someone said you couldn't get that many reps. Like, yeah. I don't know. It sounds yeah. dumb, but like I watched oh. the Michael Jordan documentary. He's like, would make up fake things that players would say to him or whatever. <laughs> and Dude, he, he has it convinced in this game that uh, fucking Ronnie Pippen said he wasn't shit. Yeah, someone else like in the like on the other team was talking shit when they really weren't. They're like, hey, nice to see you. And he's like, 
get out of my face before I slap the shit nice out of you. Nice to see you, Michael. He's like, did you say you want to fuck my wife? Yeah. He's like, <laughs> what did I just hear? <laughs> he's like, oh, I need to drop 50? <laughs> so it's just like, I don't know. That's uh, you gotta, what I've you, been on lately. Yeah, I've kind of just been like on the... Another thing is like how I was just saying is like I I want that I want to feel my emotions in the deepest way possible and if it hurts and it's not a good emotion I want to learn how to fucking take that energy out in the gym and then come out on the other side with a better emotion than I went into it with yeah exactly and like the gym's been a good safe space for me lately dude it's it's literally like it's 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 my fucking therapy right now it's where I go yeah like when something's stressful but yeah it's like. A place where I go to, like, relieve stress. Yeah. Like, I've noticed, like, man, it's, like, hurt yourself in a positive way. Someone commented yeah. on my last YouTube short. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, for me, it's, like, the same thing. I just, I go there because I try to take every bit of stress I have. Like, especially the past month, I've been super stressed out from, like, work. Got a lot of shit going on. And so I'm using the gym just to like trying to like filter out all those fucking bad emotions and, uh -huh. and just like I tr I'm lately I've been like the past month I've been trying to leave it all at the door and not bring it home but I've been kind of failing I've been kind of a dick the past couple of weeks because shit's been stressful <laughs> but and my bad but I'm I try not to do that I I try to but usually like I'll be home for an hour or two and I'll be pissed off pissy mood or whatever but then I'll get over it and then I'll be good. Yeah. But sometimes shit gets like that. You just get a lot on your fucking plate and you got, but I try to take it all out at the gym. Yeah. And so the gym, I'm really, I'm really glad you fucking got me into the gym last year. Cause I don't, now I can't fucking see going without it. I know. Cause you would only occasionally go when I was going, you know, when I was like, yeah. Hey, let's go to the gym. I'd be like, nah, I got <laughs> I got shit to do tonight. I'm watching TV. <laughs> yeah, for real. But and it was like I'd come like once, twice, maybe three times a week. Uh huh. But now I'm I'm a fucking crackhead at the gym now. Dude, I'm glad I got you into it. That's if, dude, the amount of people I have invited to come to the gym with me. Oh yeah. Like it's crazy, and the amount that have came is zero this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just not a lot of people want to work out, bro. I mean. Maybe because it's hard and it's it's something you got like you can't just get results from right away. Like I've been doing it consistently for about eight nine months, and I still haven't seen a whole lot of results. Mm -hmm. Maybe some parts have gotten a little bigger, a little a little less fat on my body, whatever you know. But still, it's it's a fucking grind. Yeah, it's not it's not an instant gratification shit, which a lot of people nowadays want. They're like trend. Feed me trend. Literally, <laughs> Anavar. <laughs> hey, I, I'm I'm still, I still get those intrusive thoughts. <laughs> I'd like, be, be scrolling TikTok and it's this fucking crackhead like injecting his ass with <laughs> fucking trend. I'm like, and then it's just like a compilation video of fucking him just. <laughs> uh, I'm like, damn, that sounds kind of nice now. <laughs> and it's like kind of idolizing it, but it's like, why yeah. are we idolizing pumping drugs into our body? Yeah, agreed. And like, that's one thing, like. Watch my gym videos, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Promotion, shout out. Shameless pro plug. Yeah, shameless plug. Watch my gym videos. But it's like, I'm trying to do this all natural, like all yeah. natty. And I'm not going to look as big as fucking Sam Solik and like all I these could. like Sebum and stuff. Well, Sebum, he's a, he's more of a natural lifter too because he competes. But he took shit. Yeah, back in the day when he was starting. But I, well, I could be totally wrong. Maybe he still does. I think he's still on. As Sonic far as thing. I know, because he competes like in the strong or the bodybuilding shit, which they test for. So I, he's definitely on shit. Like uh -huh. there's, he's on something. But I think I don't know what it is, but. I know he competes, so maybe he comes off cycle for when he's getting tested. I don't know. I have no idea how but that stuff works. Seabum's really cool, though. He's a really cool dude. Yeah. And same with Sam. Sam is a fucking badass, dude. He's so chill. He's fucking roided the fuck up. Uh -huh. But, my God, he's such a cool dude. Uh-huh. Like, just listen to him talk and, like, then there's that's, the like, <laughs> why I like him is, like, because you could, like, get to know who the hell he is, you know? Well, cause there's, there's two sides. There's like Sam Sulek, super chill, roided up dude, fucking funny. And then on the opposite side, you got the trend twins. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> the trend twins are autistic <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> dude, they, but my God, they make some hilarious content. Bro. Uh -huh. 
Dude, they'll literally like full on brawl punching each other because they said something stupid to each other, dude. It they're they're com their their <laughs> shit is comedy. But there's there's opposite ends of the fucking steroid world, uh-huh. apparently. Because, like, the stigma is, like, if you take steroids, you're going to be this angry, like, beefed up dude. Roid rage. But Sam totally flipped the switch on that because he's just like, "Mm, you know, know what I could really go for right now? Some dumbbell press. (laughs) Some dumbbell presses sound nice right now. (laughs) Or, no, what does he say? He's like, he's like, what do you do when a girl's talking to you? And she's like, what are you doing Monday night? And she, he's like, hmm. I think I'd rather be doing some dumbbell incline press. <laughs> some du- I'd rather be doing some dumbbell incline Dude, press than you. He's just so funny. He's, he's like, a, what's the word? Uh, I don't even know the he's word. He's just nonchalant about yeah. it. He's like, you know what? I would rather be doing some hammer curls right now. Yeah. That sounds like a better pump than what I'd get. <laughs> but like, there is moments where he's definitely like gym bro as fuck. Uh huh. But then most of the time he's just chill. But then, the, then he got on the opposite end fucking trend twins, bro. Oh my God. Uh huh. But like, like I was saying, like trying to do this all natty. So like those thumbnails, I'm mm-hmm. I'm not looking as fucking huge as him, you know. Yeah. But I saw this thing. It's like you're always chasing a pump because you get a pump and you're like, yeah, like. Well, like it's <laughs> there's this one dude. I think his name's like Joey or something. And it's like he had like has like a kind of like a Boston accent. And he's like kind of saying some stupid shit. Uh-huh. But he's like he said some about. Like everyone chases the pump because you're kind of getting a glimpse into your future self. That's the TikTok I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> he's like you're you're getting a glimpse and you're like I want to be this pump normally. I want to be this guy. And then when you do get that big, then your pump's bigger. So it's like so you're it's never ending. That's kind of I think I've talked about it. I forgot who I talked about it on, but like that's who I want. Like I'm looking to be my future self. Yeah, I want to instill that in my kids. But like same in the gym, it's like, damn, like you get a glimpse into your future self with that pump. It's like, yeah. damn, this is what I really could look like. Yeah. You're like staring at yourself in the mirror. Dude, I remember like it was a couple, it was maybe a week or two ago. I like, I did chest day, bro. And I like, my chest was wrecked, fucking annihilated. And I like, and go in the sauna and they have like a TV in there and it's like covered by plastic and it kind of, if it's off, you can see your reflection in it. And so like, I was looking at myself, I'm damn, like. I'd be looking good right now. And then like a couple hours later, it's like, oh, I'm just me. Then you then you get naked to go take a shower and you look in the mirror. You're like, what happened? Like, Where did that guy go? Yeah, for real. <laughs> but I don't know. That, it, that, that is why everyone's chasing a pump because you're getting a glimpse into the future. Yeah. So it's like, damn, if you could really instill that into your normal life, mm-hmm. you know? Dude, it's funny. So like we're like super invested in the gym, right? And it's funny like you have other friends who – aren't Mm -hmm. and like jim isn't even like in a thought so like when you like talk about these things you almost sound crazy yeah like a lot of people that are listening they they probably lost interest by now because we're talking about the gym and it's not something they relate to my uh retention is down (laughs) (laughs) but it's like if i could get them in the gym like my goal is to get like five people in the gym a year i'm like come to the gym with me just come once like maybe i'll get more now like watch my videos and maybe like Cause one of the things they're like, Oh, I lift way less than you. Like it'd be annoying for you. It's like, who like, cares? Yeah. It's like, dude, when we started, you were way stronger than me. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're still stronger than me in most lifts. But I like when we first started, you were benching like 300, 305, mm-hmm. whatever it was. And my max was like, I could barely remember. I could barely get up 205. Yeah. Cause like I hadn't had that aggravated. Now I'm a lot stronger, but fucking, it was insane. Like I felt like such shit's like, damn, it's so annoying. I have to unrack his weights and it's probably annoying for him <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know. It's, but it's cool for me seeing that progress. Cause now I feel like I can keep up with you a little more. Yeah, you can. And like when we go do bench and stuff, I am lifting like a lot of the same weights as you. Yeah. For like when we're like repping stuff. Yeah. Like when we're maxing, you're, you got three fifteen looking crazy. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It feels good, but like I've hit a plateau with three fifteen. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm there and I'm like, how do these people go up from here? What, what was it the other day that I got? Was it 275? 275. Yeah, dude, that was, that was sick. It, when the first day I got it, when you were, you were here with Josh and you shouted it out on the podcast. Yes, cause, sir. Cause I sent you the video while you're doing the pod and like I was by myself and I had had to random spot me. So like when I got it up, I was like, I kind of just like gave him nuts. Then I came back to him I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, Let's go. <laughs> got my buddy Cameron actually. Um, spot yeah i think yeah it was cameron brown yeah i didn't realize who it was because i didn't really know him uh-huh. but my wife she's like oh that's cam brown i was like 
who? So I looked him up on Facebook. I'm like, that's why I thought that he dude's huge familiar. too. Yeah, he's Jack too. Oh, so shout out to you. I don't know if you ever watched my shit, but. but yeah, it was super cool. Like hitting those new PRs and like seeing how far you've come. Cause it was literally like a year ago that when I started getting into it with you, mm-hmm. like, kind of. And like, like I said, my bench was like 205 at most, like half acidly. So 70 pound plus in a year, that, I'd say that's pretty decent progress. Yeah. That's beyond decent progress. I think that was pretty fucking good, yeah. dude. And it's like, I don't know. When you, this sounds dumb, but like if you're to go into business with somebody or something, I don't know. But like if you look at somebody and you could tell they lift, you mm-hmm. could tell a lot of things about them. And like, yeah, we've, we've heard Bedros talk about it. Yeah. It's like you could tell they're dedicated, they have delayed gratification, they don't need the instant gratification. Like they're there to build something. Like you could tell they usually have a set schedule. They're usually good at being places. Yeah. They're just a disciplined person. Cause like person. So for my business, when I start getting to the point where I can start hiring employees and stuff, mm-hmm. I am going to not, I will never hire. Like, I'm sorry for you that are about to get offended by this, but I'm not going to employ like overweight people. Cause that just shows me that they're lazy and they don't have dedication to themselves. So why would I trust them with my company? Yeah. I'm not going to hire someone who's fat and out of shape. Maybe it's going to take me, uh, it's going to be harder to find employees, but I'm going to, when I hire people, if I'm going to be giving them money, my money out of my company, mm-hmm. I'm going to be making sure that they are a person that deserves it because I'm not going to employ someone who's just fat, out of shape and undisciplined. Cause that probably means they're going to be late to work and they're going to be fucking slacking off and they're going to be taking bathroom breaks breaks every hour, spending 15 minutes on the toilet consistently Mm -hmm. because they're just lazy and they don't want to be there. So if they can't even take care of themselves, how can I trust them to take care of my company? What if you give them like a preliminary hire or trial? Cause like I've seen, I've seen a lot of gym transformations lately on TikTok, Yeah, and it's like, dude, some of those like, transformation stuff is the wildest oh, like it's gnarly that like some of those people that keep going like but, that but, okay oh, you bring up a good point yeah so what another way to go about it is if maybe you can take that overweight out of shape person and you can mentor them and they can adopt your mindset and then they can get healthier yeah. be more disciplined so i agree with that so, so like, maybe, maybe i shouldn't say i would never yeah but maybe if they have a good character and they have decent characteristics to impress me enough to overlook like that in the other interview stuff, and stuff yeah but maybe i have to tell them like hey i require like physically active people people that aren't going to be lazy people that are dedicated to their craft which mm-hmm. for me is like it's the welding industry you got to be dedicated to being of not just a decent welder, but you're going to be a fucking great welder and you're going to be a bit, uh, get a better lifestyle choice choices going. Then you could do like, like I require, I don't know. Does that, does that like, that makes sense. That makes no, total does, sense. No, does that like fall under like fucking discrimination? A little bit. <laughs> like, I think I'd have to talk to a lawyer <laughs> once I start hiring people, <laughs> make sure I don't get sued. Yeah. That but, might be a discrimination, but like, but like, I don't, I don't feel like it's wrong for a company to like, discriminate against like physically incapable people well like i know a lot of jobs like where even even just fucking warehouse jobs it's like are you able to be on your feet for eight hours a day because a lot of people aren't yeah you know so i mean not really discrimination but like i don't know i guess like for for different jobs there's different tests like physical tests that Mm -hmm. you have to do that i'm trying to do yeah you know it's like to get into certain positions, some jobs do require physically, like yeah. physical requirements, like yeah. in the military. I've, I've applied for jobs that require, like, you have to be able to lift 55 pounds yeah. or 100 pounds or be able to bend over consistently. Uh huh. Or, like, in the so military, that corporate you company have to, can fuck you yeah, while you're real. bending over. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> but, but no, like maybe I maybe in the interviews I want to say like I'm not gonna hire you because you're fat. But in my mind, that's kind of where I'm gonna be going because it's like I'm gonna be able to judge them, sort of say based on their attitude, their appearance. Like if you come in fat, fucking got sh- stains on your shirt, can't even pr- present yourself decently, mm-hmm. then yeah, 
I'm going to probably not choose you. Yeah. Or it's like, like anyone would. Yeah. But I guess I'm for when I start hiring people, I'm going to just demand a higher quality of human to work for my company. Yeah. And maybe, maybe that big dude fucking drops dimes. You don't yeah. know. Yeah. Maybe he's really good at what he does, but he just needs to be surrounded by people who can help him. Yeah. And I feel like that's more of an opportunity for you to, influence someone's life if you can influence them in that direction maybe they think of you as, as like you saved them yeah and know? like they might be like you know what he's helping me like he's really influenced me to go this way to go in the gym to better well, my life so well, i'm gonna better my work for him because i'm working for him yeah so they might do also better work another for like another goal of mine is like once i have like a bigger shop and I'm like hiring people is I want a gym in my shop. Yeah. And so that way I can offer to my employees, you can work out for free. Mm -hmm. Like I've already paid for everything. You don't have to pay for a membership to for the shop gym. If you want to come in before or after your shift, then you can come work out. Yeah. I encourage you to, and you could do maybe that. Maybe that's a way I could help them. You could do a thing. Like I require you to be in this gym area one hour for two days a week. Yeah. You know, like on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you have one hour at the end of your day. You're required. Or may, to- maybe, maybe I say, hey, if you come in for an hour twice a week, I'll pay you for it. Yeah, I'll pay you to be in the gym yeah, twice I will, a week. I will pay you an extra hour of your salary or hourly rate to come work out for an hour before or after your shift. You could leave early an hour on Friday, stay, stay or and get overtime pay for it. Like, yeah. It's up to you, honestly. Yeah, exactly. Like that might be, that might be something good, you know? Like what company offers that? Yeah. What company is going to say, I'll pay you to come work out in our shop gym because I want you to get healthy and I want you to become a better person. Police departments. Yeah, exactly. You know? Like government facilities. Like, there's a reason government facilities have gyms and stuff. Exactly. There. Fire stations, yeah. firefighters have that, you know, even some <laughs> office buildings have little gyms and yeah. stuff. So I don't know. I just, uh, I think that's the direction I would go is if when I start hiring people is I just, maybe I don't have to be so judgy and say, I'm not going to hire an overweight person because yeah. that maybe that was out of pocket and wrong. Of that's me. some out of pocket shit there. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> but maybe that's a way I could go about it to help someone who I think is an ideal candidate and I can possibly help in the future. Yeah. And like, kind of like we're saying, like, that's like, we're wanting to do the social medias and stuff and help influence lives. Yeah, man. You got to like be able to like help someone in that dark space. Yeah. Like, cause like you were in that, like you talked about it, you were in that dark space and you came out. Yeah. You could see someone in that dark space and they might not know how to get out. Fuck dude. If you were there and help them, like, like how you said, like I got you in the gym. If you get someone else in the gym, bro, like they'll be like, fuck dude. Like that, that dude really saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. Exactly. And like I, I, over the past year, like obviously we scroll TikTok or Instagram or whatever. There's a lot of videos that like really like, I can't think of a specific one right now, but there's a lot of vis- videos that like resonated with me in a way of like, damn, like you're right. I do need to make a change. I do need to do this better. Or I do need to be more consistent, be more disciplined, be mm-hmm. more of a savage fucking dude. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of shit that like, I've seen just on the internet and I just want to like put content out that maybe makes people have that same feeling I got from other people's content. Yeah. Like literally like, cause like you'll send me something like we, we always share dumb shit too, but like we we be sharing (laughs) some dumb shit, but then we be sending some real shit. You send me some stuff that like hits hard and like, I'll be laying in bed. I've already worked out that day and it's like, I'm going to go work out right now. (laughs) Like, and it's like, I want to film content like (laughs) Like, that. Like lately I've been sending you shit. Send send this to someone who skipped the gym today. (laughs) Yeah, for real. I'll be flaming Amelia for that shit. Damn. But he's got a baby, so I understand. And I'm not actually a dick about it. I just yeah. like to fuck with him. And you need a friend that'll fucking dick with you a little bit. <laughs> I just but I, I just like pissing him off a little. I know, a little bit. <laughs> Gotta light a fire. But like I feel like you need two different modes and like you've talked about that. Like you need that Mike Tyson mode. Like Mike's kind of like a prime example. Like I'm gonna eat your heart, like, you know, I wanna <laughs> yeah. see you in pain, like kind of <laughs> shit. Like I forget what that that interview after I forgot who he beat, but they I can't think of it. It's that his famous like speech after a fight. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I just can't remember who he fought. And then like now he's on podcast. Like, oh, we just need to love each other, man. Yeah, for the, real. a guy brought a gun to the club. I gave him a hug. I said, you need a <laughs> hug. 
<laughs> this dude's about to shoot up the club and Mike Tyson's there hugging him. Like <laughs> that's sick. <laughs> but no, like for real though, Mike Tyson is like that. Cause like you see him on podcast cause he like smokes weed. So he's really chill off. But when he's like in like right now he's fight camp. Yeah. When he's in fight camp, dude, he's a fucking savage. He that, will fucking kill you. Roman empire. Literally. <laughs> he was on Joe Rogan talking about like he had study old, like Alexander the great and like mm-hmm. all these Genghis old, Kong Genghis Khan and like, all these ancient like conquerors. Yeah. Fucking genocidal maniacs. And like, that's who he like goes into his camp as is like, he's this conqueror. Like, you yeah. know, like, shit's wild. But then he goes on a podcast and he's high as fuck. And he's like, dude, the world just needs more love, man. We all need to <laughs> love each other. Uh huh. And then you're like, is this the same fucking dude? <laughs> this is the same dude. I just saw two different TikToks like in within five minutes. Yeah. And totally different. And now he's getting ready. To fight Jake Paul, and he's, I see his training videos, and he's looking crazy at 60 yeah, that years old, and he goes, still want to fuck with me, Jake? Yeah, that dude's nuts. And then he Jake's, has a Jake. Jake's going to get his fucking head t- kicked in. I think so, too. And then he has a t-shirt, sign the contract, big boy. It's like, <laughs> this dude is like on two different wavelengths. Yeah, this dude. Mike Tyson's just a different type of human, bro. Right. He's, he's part fucking ape, I swear to God. Uh-huh. <laughs> like... That or like alien or something. For real. He's one of these reptilians we're specimen. talking about. <laughs> oh, it's fuck, dude. But anyway, so getting close to the end here. What what's this shirt and stuff you got going on? So there's a dude out here in Tula County. Uh, he started a clothing attire for like gym wear. It's called Only Gains. <laughs> so he's kind of he kind of took the the inspiration from only fans and but he calls it only gains and he uh it's just a local company sells gym attire shirts clothes um stuff like that and so i how i wanted to start my own like content creation stuff i reached out to him and i was like hey man like i don't know if like this is something you'd be willing to do because my wife actually well side note my wife has went to the same gym as him at any time and has seen him and she's like talked to him about me. And so we've kind of talked back and forth. And so I reached out to him like, Hey man, would, would you be interested in maybe like, I just giving me a sponsorship cause I'm starting a content creation page and like, I'll buy your stuff. Like I'm not asking for a handout, but I'll buy some of your gear and like, I'll promote it in my videos and I may not have a following right now, but like once I do, it might gain traction. And so, he said, yeah, like, I'm totally down for that. We can give you, like, your own code. So when people use it, when they buy stuff online, you'll get, like, however much back uh, for, per sale and stuff. And I was like, hell, yeah, that'd be awesome. Because, like, I, I'm just the type, since I have a local business, I want to support other local businesses. Yeah. So that's why I reached out to him. And, like, dude, he, I yesterday I got uh, – I ordered all this clothing and, like, debatably some of the best gym clothes i've had like ever because like they, these shorts i'm wearing super comfy like like i told you like i would compare them to lululemon tr- uh shirt shorts damn they're they're super fucking comfy and this is kind of like this is what i like to call the the push-up bra t-shirt so like it's <laughs> tight on the arms but like loose on the stomach area Good. push-up bra for men yeah, right it's, there. The, it's the push-up bra shirt and then he's got some like the og style like the oversized shirts for working out in just super like really good quality stuff. So shout out to only gains because I think their shit's sick and I'm probably going to be repping their shit every time I go to the gym now. Hell yeah. What's your, do you have your code yet? I don't have the code yet. We haven't set it up yet cause it's still fairly new. So once I do though, I'll be blasting that shit. We'll be putting that shit out. Yeah. But go fucking follow them on, on, on Instagram. In Instagram on it's, Insta, I think, yeah, it's a uh, it's just only gains, only gains, yeah. Your shirt, your shorts feel pretty good, dude. They're they're so comfy. Let me like, feel these. We're gonna turn this into an OnlyFans. God. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that feels good, me. dude. They're like stretchy and like not like tight though. Damn. They're like tight fitting, but they don't feel like you're like locked into your shorts. You know, like, yeah. I went to the gym today, or. No, I didn't even wear them at the gym, but I wore another pair of shorts at the gym that are like mesh shorts. Mm -hmm. So they're not the same as these. They're like those mesh shorts with the holes and those are super comfy, flexible and stuff. But these super excited to work out and I'm going to try to work out the, on these for leg day Mm -hmm. and see how they hold up while I'm squatting and stuff, bro. And, uh, speaking of like what we've already talked about, I did it last year. 
these kind of shorts are perfect golf shorts. Dude, that that's what my wife said when I tried them on yesterday. She's like, you're going to love those while you're golfing. I'm like, oh, my God, that's so true. Because remember, I'd wear my Lululemon yeah. ones. And, with so, my, and it, it looks good with the polo tee. They look like classy, like golf yeah. shorts, but they feel better and looser. Yeah. And like, They're super, like, comfortable. I wore them to the movies last night. And usually when, like, I go to the movies and I wear shorts, like, I'm kind of, like, moving around like adjusting adjusting my package <laughs> but these were like super comfy i love them so i told the dude i'm like dude i need a pair in red gray white fucking whatever dude because i want to wear them every day oh yeah that's awesome Because i've been looking for so i have like so many basketball shorts from like high school like mm-hmm. 10 years old that i still wear like the fucking past the knee ones and i'm <laughs> over it like styles have changed nowadays the baggy shorts are out Uh uh-huh and so i'm i literally purged like probably like 25 of my t-shirts in my closet and like four or five pairs of my uh shorts so i'm gonna try to just like i'm going for i'm gonna buy like four more pairs of these like two more pairs of the mesh ones and i'm just you're probably gonna see me rep repping them all the fucking time now yeah that's awesome because like i'm really particular about because like I still feel weird about if they're too short, but these are like perfect length, exactly how I want them to fit. So I'm going to be wearing these all the fucking time. So you're going to turn into like you needing to go to the gym and like your gym, gym outfit. Cause that's how I am. Mm -hmm. Like now that I've gotten more serious into it, it's like, damn, I want to wear clothes to the gym that I feel comfortable in. Yeah. Like I want to wear the push up bra shirts. Yeah. (laughs) You know? Well, it's funny cause I, that's how I was, but now like I've kind of, I'm kind of more into like the, the oversized shirts uh-huh. because like, pump I, cover. yeah, I like pump cover type shirts. Cause like, I like, I don't like feeling like when I'm doing like extension stuff, I don't like feeling my it tight around my arms. I like it to be looser. So I have like more well, flexibility. So, I mean, it's preference, but that's how I've been lately. So like his oversized shirt that he gave me, it's so comfortable, bro. I love it so much. That's cool. Like, I don't know. My thing is like the oversized shorts. I don't like because it's no. like they feel like, you know, but those feel more like, yeah, more mobility and stuff. Yeah, when when I feel sh- that way with the shirt, like just like not not tight, tight, but yeah. not like not like an Under Armour shirt, but not like a boxy shirt. Dude, if you get some, you have to get the oversized black shirt because it's not like it's like that stretchy fabric I was telling you about. But mm-hmm. it's a little loose. It's tighter on the arms, but like loose everywhere else. So but it's stretchy. So working out in it today was super nice. Damn. So you'll, you'd like that shirt a lot. So I'll have to show you which one that is. Yeah, you will. That'll be sick. But yeah. But, so when uh when are we expecting this first video? Because last time you were on here, I was like, I'm gonna be harping on you hey, until you start hey, it. Hey, we've made progress. I got the page up. We're I made a little like coming soon video. We're we're getting there. Oh yeah. And yeah. you got some TikToks rolling out. Yeah, we've so got, we so shout out the rolls. name of your YouTube. What's your YouTube? So my YouTube channel is called Zero Limit Mentality. And then same it's the same on Instagram, just zero dot limit dot mentality. Oh, yeah. But I got a I got the the name for it that cause my uh business that I currently run for welding and fabrication is called Zero Limit Welding and Fabrication. Mm-hmm. So I'm kinda trying to make like a little like like brand universe, you know? I like so it. So like I'm sticking with the zero limit, but it's mentality because it's kind of showing more of like my day to day rather than my zero limit welding Mm -hmm. now i got my zero limit mentality because it's kind of like it's funny because so zero limit came from like three or four years ago like i had this hyper fixation i wanted to start a clothing brand and so i came up with zero limit i was upset you didn't make those shirts those would look sick so i came up with zero limit and i had my sister drop some logos but i just lost interest in it and i never did it and so I always had like the logo saved in my phone. And then last year when I quit my job and I was making like my own company, I was like, what should I use? And I was like, I'm going to use zero limit, zero limit, uh, welding and fabrication. Mm -hmm. And so I kept that. And then when I was making the YouTube, I'm like, damn, I should just stick with zero limit. Cause that's like my thing now. So now it's like mentality. Now I think of zero limit as like more of like the, what you think of what I think of when I'm thinking about my thoughts and uh, my approach to my life, you know? Yeah. And like, maybe I can get people on the train of joining the zero limit mentality, you know, like where I don't want to limit myself. I don't want to say I can never, I can't do anything because I feel like I can do anything. And if I put my mind to it, you know, so that's kind of just like 
where I think zero limit fits in good for me. I like it. That'll be sick. Yeah. So. So should be rolling out soon. Okay. All hopefully, right. All right. hopefully for real by the next time I'm on here, we'll we'll be in full swing. Okay. I like it. Yeah. So. Be be looking out for his stuff. And and the reason it's taking so long because I've told you, dude. I'm like I obsess over it. I'm already getting like obsessive over it, and so I. I'm like the type where if I'm going to do something, I got to do it right. I want to do it just how I want. I got this idea in my head. Uh-huh. It's got to be that way. You know, I'm super particular about it. So that's why it's taking time. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to put out something that I don't like some subpar. Yeah. Well, that's kind of like how not, I was. And I'm not saying I'm going to put out the most perfect content you'll see on the internet, you know, cause I'm not, it's probably going to still be dog shit to other people's eyes. Mm-hmm. But to my eyes, it's what, I want it to be. I, it looks and feels how I want it to be because I want people to see my brand of or content and be like, "Damn, that 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 dude has his own vibe," you know. Yeah. So and I want it to make it mine. So that's kind of why it's taking so long because I I want to. I'm really thinking about how I want to present things. Yeah. You know. That'll be that'll be cool. Dude. Maybe maybe it's an excuse why I haven't done it, but that's kind of like my reasoning. It's like I want to. I just want to do things right and how I see them in my eyes. No, I like that. That'll be sick. Cause like, you know, this, like my journey with this, like I used to have a little desk here. Yeah. It was all ghetto. <laughs> you had a little desk with the <laughs> Milwaukee uh, light on, uh, but it was like, had books and like shoe boxes stacked up for yeah. the camera so I could get a certain height. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, man, like you'll never be happy. And like, you'll, you'll watch your first video and be like, yeah, I need to do some different shit right yeah, here. Exactly. Like, this ain't it. That's what I'm expecting. I'm going to have this idea and then maybe I'll rewatch it and it'll be like, damn, I need to change this, but it's a learning curve. But for the initial, I just want to get the things I want and I want to do a podcast too and kind of do the same thing and just shoot the shit with people, you know, but it's not just going to be the podcast. It'll be a lot of videos too. Oh yeah. That'll be sick. Probably. So you have a podcast that comes out every week. Maybe I'll do like two, two a month or something like that. Two a month every, every, other, week. every other week, something like that, you know, mm-hmm. but if I do that, the see the problem behind that is I want to do it at my shop, but my shop is really echoey. So there's, there's some work that needs to be done to put down the echo. Dude, these mics like cheat code, that software that it comes with will like mm-hmm. cancel out echo and like right. background noise and stuff. All right. Well, there's some mics and like some programs and stuff that do that. Yeah. You have the same brand of mics that I want to get, but I want to get the wireless ones. Sam Solik ones. Yeah, the, on the, the the Rode Wireless Go or whatever the fuck. Uh huh. Like, because I, I really like those because I like the idea that it's just small, compact, and you can just clip it on. Yeah, I want to get it those. Does, it doesn't look like the little, like piece of shit ones that people be using. You know, the little one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to get one of those too. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's probably the mics I'm gonna use. How much? Were these, are these nice? Do you like these a lot? I do. So, for podcasts, I think these are perfect. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll, maybe I'll look into these two for pods, but we'll see. I don't yeah. Know. But I, 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 want, I was thinking the wireless ones, that way I could do it at the gym and just clip it on and not worry about it. And yeah. I don't have to hold it and whatever, you know, so. That's what I need to get one of those for the gym stuff I've been doing. Yeah. Bro, it's a different mentality to go into a gym with a tripod. Oh, my <laughs> God, dude. <laughs> I've been to two bosses, and I feel so weird doing it. I feel like a douche. Yeah, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm for this real? guy. And I like pull today, up the camera and, like. T- today, I don't even have a tripod or nothing. I was just sitting on my phone, like, like in whatever way I could, you know, that worked. And, like, I feel like I'm, like, looking around, like, please don't judge me for doing this. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to do my own thing. And it still feels weird pulling out your phone and, like, sitting it. Yeah. And what I've noticed is, like, it's easier to just go in with a goddamn tripod because it, your setup is so much quicker. If you're going to get judged, you might as well get judged all the way. <laughs> yeah, and it's, like, setup's quicker. I can hit this lift quicker, and then I'm done with it quicker. Whereas, like, if yeah. you're doing the phone, you're, like, set it down you're like oh shit that's not it and then you're you adjusting put, it you gotta and put like, something behind it or in front of it to quit it from falling down yeah so i was like damn just just get the tripod yeah i don't know so hopefully by the next time i come on we'll we'll be in full swing oh yeah that'll be sick so keep your eyes out all right yeah anything else you want to shout out shout out uh, no no we shout out to my <laughs> wife for letting me do this shit for real because <laughs> it's a lot of time yeah, uh, I mean, I guess I, where was I going to go? I don't even know. I lost my train of thought. I'm retired. We're going to go home. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go home. We're going to go play some football. Yeah. Are you excited? In the rain. I think it's still raining. It'll be fun. But it'll be a good time. It'll be fun. See how many balls I drop. <laughs> For real. But I'll be slinging them. Hell yeah. I'll be playing QB today. Some Baker Mayfield action right here. Sheesh. Sheesh.
<laughs> but no. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. If you made it this far, you're an OG. You're a real one. Facts. But, you know, uh, come back next week. Check it out. Check out my gym videos. Last yeah, thing. Watch the damn gym videos. <laughs> like and subscribe. For real. Peace. Laters.